So the big question that I said we were answering in this class was the question of how do electrons respond to electromagnetic forces? And one of the claims that I made early on in the class was that essentially this was the only question that we were answering, that when we looked at all these different types of um, behavior, the properties, electronic properties, those essentially can be traced to the something about the structure. And in particular, the thing about the structure is the electronic band structure. And um, we won't say too much in this class about what the relationship is between the processing and the structure. Basically, what I said was anything that of the processing that alters this is uh, essentially going to alter these electro-optical magnetic, magnetic properties. In class, the idea was to um, dig deeper into what the electronic band structure is. And to do this, I'm going to go ahead and look at sections in your book. So here is the table of contents in brief, and I wanted to point out that really the thing that we're looking at here is in Chapter 4, Modern Theory of Solids. So what I'll do is walk you through a couple of the pictures that are in this chapter. So and you could go back and read it if you want to. But this chapter starts with the notion of the hydrogen atom. And you could see that they're depicting here two isolated hydrogen atoms. And they're saying that if you were to look at the uh, wave function, we'd see that the wave function would peak around the center of this hydrogen atom and the hydrogen electron would experience the center as being a positive charge and of course it's traveling around that positive charge. Now what they're saying in these diagrams is that when these when the H2 molecules formed you get something called a bonding orbital where the electron is localized to a location between the two positive cores and then something called an antibonding orbital. Now, what does that mean, antibonding orbital? Well, essentially what it means is the electron is found um, outside of the two atom cores rather than between the atom cores. And another, way, another way of saying that is it doesn't act, this electron doesn't actually contribute, or the electron being in this state, the antibonding orbital state, uh, does not actually contribute to the relationship between those atom cores. It's an anti-bonding. Something that I'm assuming here that you know is that the square of this, or this times its complex conjugate, is equal to the probability of finding the electron there. Okay, so here's the picture that they uh, show you is the bonding orbital here, the electron being located between the two atoms, and then the antibonding, the electron being away from the atoms. And they're showing here the square, or the the absolute value of the of psi squared or psi times its complex conjugate. Um, and here's another picture of the same thing, that if you were to uh, examine energy as a function of radius, what you would see is that when the distance of separation or radius between the atoms is large, you have a single electron state. One, they're showing this as the 1s state. Here is another way of representing it. A hydrogen atom by itself has a 1s state. Now when you bring these two together, a separation distance of a, presumably that's the interatomic spacing, then what happens is that single state splits into a bonding state and an anti-bonding state. So it's depicted in this picture like this. There's a lower energy state where the electrons are between the two atoms, and then there's a higher energy state that's possible for the electrons to occupy. But if the electrons were occupying that state, it would not contribute to the bonding. It would be anti-bonding. So now the section is on band theory of solids. So those were two atoms coming together. Now here they're showing, showing you that Eventually, when you bring in more and more atoms together in the same picture, they're separated and they're isolated. They have the single electron state. When they come together, that state begins to split into different energy states until you get a system of atoms and you get a multiple levels of different electron states that could be occupied. And it turns out that, the, of course, the lowest energy states are filled and the higher energy states are empty. And this produces, um, in a metal, the valence band and the conduction band. And of course, these are the core electrons 
that are active in the X-ray emission process. Of course, not for light elements. Here's a picture of the same thing. Um, again, the lithium atoms are brought together, and this, these are the splitting bands, theoretically what they would look like. When they're separate atoms, you have discrete levels. When they come together, you have bands, a full band, now an empty band, valence band, and conduction band. Here's another picture of the same thing. And in this picture, the Fermi energy is uh, the highest energy level for the electrons is labeled E sub F. This is the work function, the energy required to take an electron from the Fermi energy out of the material to the vacuum level. Now, why would you want to do this? An example of when you might want to do this is when you have um, a piece of metal serving as the source of electrons in a scanning electron microscope. This is another way of depicting the situation where we have the classic band picture here and a little bit more detail where we have energy on this axis, same as this axis, and now we have momentum of the electron particle in the crystal, plus x, plus and minus x. This is a one-dimensional momentum, and they're showing that the electrons that occupy different energy states actually have a different uh, momentum in the crystal. And when you put an electric field on that same crystal, the electrons are going to want to, of course, move up into the field. They do so, and when, when doing so, they have higher momentum, higher energy. They can be scattered, that's what the scattering is, and actually go back to a lower energy state in the scattering process.